site. They know they're trapped, and they're gonna go ahead and use a straight slack! Slack comes in! Give me the slack slams in the chat! Slack slams in the chat! Just dip into Jay! He cheats! He does it! He hits the shot! He hasn't finished it yet, though! He slides on me! He hits another one! I'm taking it! <laughs> What's going on, guys and gals? And welcome to Esports in 30, the show where we take a deep dive into different esports each day of the week. Fridays, though, it's all about scopes and snipes because it's FPS day, baby. I'm Marissa Roberto. This is Zurich El Buela. And today, my friend, it's all about Call of Duty. Are you pumped? I'm super pumped. COD is what, just one of those games. It's just yeah. all hype, pure adrenaline rush. Everything. Oh, yeah. is, everybody's dying every like two <laughs> seconds, and everybody's responding every two seconds. And I mean, Dashi just popped off. Popped off, like, I know. Insane. There was crazy 180 kills, just like pointing one direction, then going 180 and killing somebody else in the back. And I don't know how they do that with their <laughs> with their controllers. I I play mouse and keyboard, so I I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. Superior race PC. I understand. These boys, though, they're showing us what up, and I love all of that. We're going to actually phone a friend to give us the insider goods. And while we dial that friend, let's get hyped up with those highlights from week five and six of the CWL Pro League. Now Abizi's gonna make his way towards the bomb. The bomb's gone down. Can Abizi find something? He's in from behind! Abizi's in from behind! He's got the shots around! Make no. him down! Can he find the slide? He does! Nice spread here from LG to at least make this difficult. He's kind of got them trapped inside that A site. They know they're trapped and they're gonna go ahead and use a straight slack! Slack comes in! Give me the slack slams in the chat! Slack slams in the chat! What was that? Is that the first five man we've seen? <laughs> and he's gonna drop two and a half ticks. It should be it. Red Reserve, they've snatched the game, or have they? Because Method 6 slides in, he's contested, he's pulled time. Somehow he's found himself to a miraculous little position. Looking with two heretics, I can't believe what I'm witnessing. They've somehow broken through, the decap comes through. Scrubs with a double, but it doesn't matter. Now the flood in from the other side, you've got Fellow trying to shoot you in the back. He can't finish both quite yet. With an interruption, is oh, see him. <laughs> Two players in sushi, got a couple players in the back, but now the grass lamp might be the play, but it's oh! up. Zero gets his first. What does simply love to see? You don't love to see that. No, I just think it's definitely not that either. Tommy with the double. He can be so potent with the sniper rifle. The hell, why not three? After everything, look how close he still is. A 10 point game between these two teams, and my goodness, more team kills. Oh. And I think oh. the Saints like, oh my, oh, stop. Leave him alone. They're on your team! Just tip us up. Just tip us up! Jay! He cheats! He does it! He hits the shot! He hasn't finished it yet, though! He slides on me! He hits another one! I'll take it! <laughs> and we're going to around 11! Dash is just finding these first bloods. So. I don't know. I thought you had to have a headshot when they have attack five. Am I just an idiot? What? Oh, did you see that? The flanking. Kill them all, might be Zeet. Sees one cross, has another right in front of him. Again, has his information, but does he check his right? He <gasps> doesn't matter. What? The gunfight risk finds his kill. Priesta, I thought he got caught. He hit Dashi to 4 HP. Almost turned and smoked him, but Dashi able to close out the gunfight and get away for now. Not, not something you see very often, but there's the first three again. Karma to get it now, Dashi. He's the one snapping his Dashi. He gets three lightning strike in for Karma. All right, now I want to welcome to the show the EU United General Manager, Matthew Burns Ponhoff. What's going on? Not much, just uh, hanging out, trying to enjoy another day in esports. I mean, so say we all. But before we can enjoy, we must get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Burns. Are you the cod burner? I am not, sadly. I wish I had the time to do it, but uh, unfortunately, I don't. It makes it kind of makes sense because his name is kind of in the username already. <laughs> so I don't know, kind of sketch. It, it's sus. True. It's sus. It, 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 yeah, it is quite sus. It's and sus. you guys also uh, put out a video recently on your socials of actually trying to discover who the cod burner is. Whose idea was this? <laughs> Uh, it was our creative director, uh, Media Brute. So uh, we just kind of went into a game plan with uh, Lee Jin, who is our uh, influencer at E United. 
had him try to break down and kind of interview different people on who they thought the cod burner was. My favorite part was him just going behind a <laughs> e United supporter and whispering in the ear, like, hey, do you know who the cod burner is? Like, hey, wait, what are you doing? Like, uh, it was really, really funny to see. <laughs> it was awesome. I just love when you guys put stuff out. First of all, e United has fantastic social game, like, on Appreciate top that. of everything. Quality content. Uh, quality content, mm -hmm. and always on top of making more content. I mean, even Clayster is so good at it, too. Um, but I love that you guys put it out there. You actually went through the event, so it gives us as the audience a way in mm -hmm. and we get a little closer, maybe a little more understanding of who the Codburner could be, although it just left us asking more questions. Yeah, then. definitely. <laughs> I, it definitely did. Unfortunately, Legion couldn't crack the case, but uh, maybe in, next, in the next episode we can. Maybe in London. <laughs> yeah. uh, detectives on the case for sure. Okay, so let's talk about United right now because you guys recently, recently let go of Saint and you brought in Vicento. So uh, just talk about that changeover for you guys and what it means for the team. Yeah, so bringing in Bryce, uh, I'm just excited to uh, have someone that can kind of change the culture of our team. Um, Brian has been a fantastic addition as a coach. Um, he did tremendous amount of positive work over the past year. Um, he reversed our, you know, sinking ship in World War II. Um, we just underwent a lot of, you know, drama, a lot of turmoil over the past three months. And, you know, just kind of reviewing our team and what was needed. We felt it was best to make a, a management change and just kind of change the atmosphere, the environment and the culture of the team. And hopefully that, you know, punches a a new uh, direction for the guys to kind of reiterate like how serious we are about you know their performance and what we expect from our Call of Duty team. So you, do you think this newly evolved uh, roster will be is going to be ready for the playoffs in London? Hmm. Yes, I do. So, you know, our past week, we had four days of practice going into pro league. Um, I was expecting us to go three and one or unfortunately two and two. Thankfully, we went three and one. Uh, I felt Simp played above expectations, was really excited to see what he could do on land. Um, and he kind of, you know, took the pressure, the drama. He put it all in the past and he, he showed up to play. And I feel like we have a, a bright future with Simp. When you guys uh, saw, when you saw the pools revealed last night, what went through your mind? Uh, I was like, thank God, we finally have a decent pool. <laughs> Usually we get stuck with uh, Optic or another high-level team. Um, all 16 teams, you, you know, can't be fooled. Like, everyone is super competitive. You know, even in, even the teams in Pool D, if they're shooting straight, if they're playing their A game, they could go and make a, a tremendous run at London. Uh, but I finally feel like we got some good matchups and no excuses this time for us mm. not to get out into winner's bracket. Mm, I love that. Um, speaking of Optic, actually, I feel like, let's first of all, let's just chat about the other teams here because they've been struggling, I think, kind of struggled in Fort Worth. We saw them play last night, too. Mm -hmm. Just a little shaky in Pro League overall. They got 3 0 mm -hmm. um, So, and honestly, they've been kind of shaky playing worse teams, if so to speak. Uh, all yep. matches for the three days of Week 6 went to five games. Uh, Dashi hasn't really slowed down, though, in the slightest since his break and has been insane in the Pro League so far. So, how have you seen this player grow and what is he? bringing that optic kind of seems to be lacking uh dashi is probably one of the most talented players in the game um you know just kind of referring to cod world week definitely a player that can take over at any moment uh anytime he pulls out of tempest you're just scared like even when we play against them if he pulls out of tempest you feel like he could just completely wipe a team and change the momentum of the game uh i feel like you know, Optic adding him and TJ uh, was one of the best decisions they made. Their mm -hmm. search and destroy got good. Um, they maybe got a little complacent after winning uh, Vegas, and that might have led to, you know, a slow finish at Fort Worth and uh, maybe some bad practice leading up into, uh, you know, Fort Worth and that event specifically. I know they're undergoing uh, role changes and specialist changes, and they're trying to kind of find their identity again uh, since the meta does change in COD, um, you know, every month or so. Uh, I feel like they'll be back on track once they, uh, once they get some good practice and kind of figure out what they're trying to accomplish again as a team. You mentioned TJ there. Uh, mm. Optic fans are, are very quick to criticize in the best For circumstances, sure. but Pac-Man gave a serious defense of TJ in the face of that criticism. Mm. So talk to us about TJ and his place on this Optic roster and why he's better. he's been better than his numbers. Mm. 
Yeah, I completely echo what Pac-Man's saying. Um, just reinforcing that TJ's role is really hard to do. Um, just like Pristini and our team, you, you know, he might not be dropping above the 1.0 KD, but you're the entry player. You're you're baiting for your team. You're trying to get in those really awkward gunfights. And TJ is a champion. I mean, he's won multiple times. He knows what he's doing. He know he understands what it takes to win. And I think people underrate him all the time, mm -hmm. and he always finds a way to get back on top. So um, I don't think Optic fans really have anything to worry about. Mm -hmm. I think TJ is just trying to figure out what his team wants him to do. And when you have to change your specialist multiple times and go mm -hmm. back and forth, it changes your timing. It changes your uh, the relationship with your teammates when you're approaching different gunfights and rotations. So I think he will be, you know, good to go. And uh, I think Optic fans should just try to realize that he is trying to, you know, get back on top and that he is a champion and knows what he's doing. It just, it just kind of seems crazy to me to see, to know that he's the entry fragger. Mm -hmm. Are they not maybe clicking that the fans aren't, just aren't understanding? Yeah, for sure. Like there's always a thing with entry fraggers and having a very high death ratio. Because yeah. your point, sure. the point of your role is to just go in there and try to go ham, get as much information. A one-to-one -one trade is good. Uh, I, I mean, in COD especially, yeah. right? Like yeah. that's already a very good trade. So. It's it's always gonna be at your KD is gonna look one to one like yeah. unfortunately but that is that means you're doing your job properly. Just for, okay, <laughs> fine. I just want the fans to understand. I know. They're doing their best. <laughs> I right. know. That team just has so much. It's just very high expectations, and anything re other than a, a win is a disappointment. So yeah. they'll be back right. on track for sure. I want to talk about another team that seems to be struggling. Red, uh, especially in week five here. Um, they only beat EXG. They lost to Envy, Heretic. Obviously, you guys uh, on the cusp of the bottom half of the group now, really. So is the result in Fort Worth and maybe these recent losses a symptom of a problem for Red or simply just a slow stretch? So I think with Red, they're dealing with uh, investment issues as mm -hmm. an organization. I saw Zero tweet out today that yeah. he uh, unfortunately is I guess their org isn't paying for their housing in Vegas. I think a lot of issues have stemmed from the relationship with their organization, and that has caused you know players to not like each other and them losing trust in their org. I think it has to do with everything outside of the game. I think all of them know what to do, but they've been dealing with so much stress with potential roster changes. Bantz tweeting out that he was a free agent right after Fort Worth when you can't even make a change. I, I just feel like there's a lot of internal drama that led to their losses this past week. God, like how do you, obviously you are the general manager of United, so you know how to deal with these types of issues if they were to come up. Like how do you see them remedying this? Um, I see that team falling apart. Um, I know Scraps tweeted out that he was trying to find a new home. Same with Zero. You know, Bantz tweeted out that he was a free agent two and a half weeks ago, and then they started clicking and playing again. So I have no idea what roster is going to be there. I've heard rumors that it's going to be a completely new organization, and Red is getting out of the scene completely, but those are just rumors. Wow. Wow. Uh, let's move on to Team NV's bounce back into the group contention after three wins over mm -hmm. LG Red and UIU. The defending champs have been on the outside looking in a lot of the Black Ops 4 events so far, but how would you evaluate their performances and trajectory moving forward in the Pro League and looking ahead to London? And this is for uh, Team NV, correct? Yes. I think they have one of the best players in the game. Hook is an all-star, uh, a franchise player, really humble. One of the one of the most humble pros I've met for his age. He's always been a, a really good kid. Uh, I feel they have the team to do it. Um, they just need to continue that momentum that they had in that pool play performance against us. I think they 3 0'd us and they made a, a crazy run. They were beating top teams, they beat Optic, and then they fell to Red Reserve in the first round of winner's bracket. So if they can play their A game, um, I feel like they could you know, do justice and win a championship. Obviously, you speak of the top fragger, someone who's on top, but is there anyone maybe who needs to step it up and get Envy back to that championship winning form? Uh, it's hard to say, you know. I think a lot of people might put pressure on Aches if he's mm -hmm. not performing. Um, I think Silly, our previous player that we had back in IW, he's been playing fantastic. Who can him have really stepped up this year and they're not necessarily carrying their team, but I think they are looking for bigger performances out of Assault, out of Aches, 
um, out of apathy, but they're all world champions. I expect them to get back on track. You can never doubt what apathy and aches can bring to a team. Mm -hmm. We have to move on to 100 Thieves. Yeah. Because uh, they Kids keep. Are crushing. Yeah, they are crushing. They keep looking strong. Clean sweep against Reciprocity, lost to Midnight, but beat Genji. Mm -hmm. How has Preset changed the destiny of this team? He, he changed everything. I mean, <laughs> as, soon, as soon as he joined, they're, they just went you know, completely up. They're climbing a mountain that was just all positive for them. Mm -hmm. uh, his submachine gun presence, his, uh, his attitude, the way he just folded into this team in an instant. I mean, they went from a, a tier two team to a tier, you know, three team, tier one, meaning the tier one, like a top three team instantly as soon as he joined the team. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the casters are talking about maybe dynasty with this team now. Do you see that on your end? Uh, I don't think anyone can call themselves a dynasty until they accomplish what Complexity did or what Optic did in mm -hmm. IW. When you're winning at least you know four or five events in a row, I think it's appropriate to call yourself a dynasty. Um, but they have the team to do it. I think there's a lot of teams that have the potential to become a dynasty, but mm -hmm. I think it's a little uh, too quick to call them that right now. Oh, casters always stir in the pot. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That's what that's what everyone likes to do for sure. Uh, so we know that 100 Thieves is is one of those very high swag and cool oh, teams, yeah. right? Do you think there's a lot of um, uh, effects to having all that swag and confidence, uh, for especially for a team like 100 Thieves? No, I, I think that suits their organization. Mm -hmm. it, it suits their players. I see a lot of memes where uh, they're taking photographs and videos instead of practicing, and I think it's absolutely hilarious. But, um, <laughs> you know, Nate Shot runs an extremely well organization, and I have a lot of respect for him and what he's done with the 100 Thieves, and I think uh, they have the, you know, the funding to really grow that brand and, and do well things with it. Uh, okay, quickly, we want to go through some roster changes with you, so we'll kind of like rapid fire these ones, because uh, there have been a ton of roster moves in the past two months, and so we kind of just wanted to go through sort of lightning round. Uh, obviously, I love your opinion, so please just give it to us straight. Uh, the new, let's talk about the new look uh, of Midnight, because they get the first win, Accelerate's kind of in the same boat, so players on Midnight still clearly want to play together, but future teams following a total rebuild, do you think? Yeah, I, I think Midnight performed well. Yeah. I, I think they have a, a good team with them right now, and uh, they'll they'll slowly start to click, especially after winning two wins this past week. Mm. And we're going to move on to Genji, mm. or Genji. I know, you always say Genji. I know, it's weird. It's weird. I don't know why. I th I'm used to like the Overwatch thing, I think. It's like the, 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 I think a lot the of people do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how do you look with uh, Envoy versus Spacely? Was he the right call? Mm. So their search and destroy went down a little bit, but their response definitely got a lot better. I think once they start to find their groove and search again, they could be a very formidable team. But uh, I'm a big fan of Spacely. I'm a big fan of what he did with that team and how he started with that core group of guys. So I was really sad to see him go, but I understand the change. Let's talk E6, uh, because they seem to be a team with big potential here, but there's a big gap yeah. between them and Envy in the standing. So what does Chino bring to the table that might have been lacking with Cade? I love Chino. Uh, Respawn, definitely his assault rifle presence. He understands what he's doing. Uh, he has very good vibes when he's winning. He can get down on himself sometimes, but uh, I think he's allowing other players on the team to play their more comfortable roles, and that's allowing them to be a little bit more explosive. Unfortunately, they couldn't clutch up this past week, but mm -hmm. I think uh, you know they can follow a, another top six finish at London if they do well. Yeah. Moving on to UIU. Mm -hmm. Um, how does Parzelion fit in with that squad? Mm. That's a good question. Yeah. I haven't had too much time to watch them. I know they we beat them 3-0 and they struggled in some of their matches in the previous you know pro league. But uh, from what I've heard, um, I think it's. Nickname is Pars. He's I can't pronounce the, his normal gamer tag. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. Pars a lion or from something. what from what I've heard, he is an exceptional player. He's still kind of you know working his way up, but uh, a lot of people in our community have a, a good amount of respect for him and what he's doing. Let's talk EG now. Obviously, rolling with the sub. So, how does Attach fit in with EG in your eyes? Attach has fit in perfectly. Mm. I hate to be like so positive, but these are really good questions. <laughs> Attach, <laughs> Attach has been performing so well on EG and it hurts to see them still, you know, two and nine in the pro league yeah. at the moment. I'm sure he's a little bit frustrated, but he 
didn't qualify with FaZe, got the opportunity to play with EG, yeah. and he's taking full advantage of it. He's playing exceptional. Absolutely. I love seeing Attach shine. He's just like one of he's those. He just seems like, yeah, such a good kid. I mean, same with my boy Zuma, obviously. Obviously. I love, I love Tommy. Right, I know. Yeah. I mean, there seems to be a ton of good players outside the CWO Pro League now, I guess, because some of them didn't make it in. So, like, Decimate, Zuma obviously come to mind. But uh, which teams do you think they'd fit into? Oof. It's really hard to say. I mean, I think there's a lot of teams that could use Decimate and, and Zuma yeah. right now. It's it's really hard to go into like what exact team, but I'd say anyone that needs uh, some machine gun pressure, someone that uh, can be a thorn on the other side of the team and on the map, and most importantly, just someone that can bring positivity to the team. I feel like that's where Zuma shines is his attitude and his willingness to hang out with his teammates outside of you know practice and tournaments. He's just a really good guy. Always helps. Other than those two, is there anybody else, any other players that you think deserves a spot on the pro league team? Uh, I can't really think of. Those are really the two highlights right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a lot of amateur talent that's still, you know, brewing. Um, you know, just like us bringing up Simp from the mm -hmm. cadet team, I, I feel like there are a lot of unforeseen talent that hasn't really been tapped into yet and uh, hoping to see more amateurs work their way up into the pro scene this year. Oh my god, yeah. It'd be so sweet to see. Burns, thank you so much for your time and your insight. Obviously, we're super hyped for the rest of Pro League, so we appreciate you calling in and getting us all up to speed. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. All right, there was a lot to unpack there. Obviously, Burns, so fantastic, because he's mm -hmm. able to give a perspective on, like, obviously the management, management side of things, how his, how his players are feeling, how other players might feel. Uh, just love that insight. Obviously, something he touched on was Red Reserve. Mm -hmm. And the fact that there has been some turmoil, obviously, you know, I like the drums. Yes. So we're going to dive a little deeper into that, because there were tweets, like he did yeah. mention, but there's a lot of drums. Yeah, so like I'm gonna quote this tweet right okay. now from Zero. Been told by Red owner to leave the house we are staying in because they couldn't pay for it. Yeah. I don't know how or why we're in the, we are in this situation or, mm. or how I've been able to keep it under wraps. Mm. Guess we'll see what the streets of Vegas are saying. Okay, that makes me feel away because now I feel like, okay, is he saying that he's homeless, like he's got nowhere to be? That's yeah, crazy. Yes, that is insane. It's so crazy. And like, I don't know how these orgs, like, I guess uh, just to echo what Burns was saying, how like he thinks they're going to fold. Yeah, that must be the case because how can you just now let your players kind of be out there in the world? They're going to tweet things. Obviously, you know how the Call of Duty community works. They're oh, going yeah. to say exactly <laughs> how they feel online. We're going to know everything. They're going to be completely scorched by not mm -hmm. only the players, but now the whole community. And mm -hmm. now we all look at Red Reserve as like, okay, what the H now? Like, you can't possibly make a name for yourself in this in this scene at all. Yeah, imagine if Cod Burner was in red. It it would be spicy, juicy <laughs> for us, but probably not for for that team in particular. They, <sighs> that that sucks. It sucks because you don't want to think about players. First of all, like I know the orgs kind of carry all of the control in this league. Number one, the players really don't have any say in a lot of these things. Obviously, they need some kind of players' union put into place or implemented somehow. Hopefully, that will come for them in the future. Mm -hmm. As esports just tend to grow, and and all with all of these genres, they really should have something there in place. I know the CS:GO community really had been working on something for a long time. Yep. Like it takes a while to get there. Uh, I just want like they're just paving the way now for kids to come, for the new generation to come in and hopefully have some kind of security there because to just be left on the street like with That's nothing terrible. so crazy that so just not okay but uh i want to just kind of table this now uh before we get to some Fortnite. but i do want to mention mm -hmm. that um there may be a pokey buff there may be a pokey oh. buff going into london for gunless oh. because slacked also tweeted yesterday uh, for people to watch out for London because Gunless has the Pokey buff. Yo, he tweeted a photo of himself at the gym, just, you know, showing off his bicep. Pokey responded, kind of mm -hmm. pumping his tires a little bit. And so now all the other teams should be worried because he's got the Pokey buff. Yeah, so like a kind of a history lesson. The last time that this has occurred, the mm. team that Pokey replied to, mm completely swept the entire tournament. So, I mean, there, maybe it's real, maybe it's a thing that, that it's, it, it kind of exists in the realm of... Esports. Uh, yeah, esports. Yeah. It's like a buff that everybody gets, but every time there, somebody replies or so, Pokey replies to them. Hey, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, we'll she see. is a lucky charm. And to be fair, she did reply to a Lisa tweet 
earlier, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, and I think since then Lisa has been heavily buffed. Oh yeah, for so, sure. So yeah, Pokies? have you seen her guns? <laughs> I'll have, I'll have her show us <laughs> later on. Uh, we do need to talk about Fortnite here just for a second because when they announced, when Epic announced the 16 by 9 mm -hmm. scenario, you were not happy. Yeah, but not for the reason that they changed, not because they changed it. Okay. I'm, I'm, I was unhappy that it took them this long okay. to implement this. Because first of all, um, so the entire stretch resolution originated from CSGO. Mm. So people used to stretch their, uh, their screen to four by, from 4x3 four mm. to make their opponents look wider. Oh. So then it's easier to shoot them because they have wider heads. Okay. Okay. Also, because most of the computers back then had uh, very bad um, systems, like your GPU is really bad. So then, mm. playing in a lower resolution, a stretch re resolution would give you more FPS. So there was kind of an advantage in really playing that way before. So when Fortnite came out, there was no rules against that. So then, people could go inside the game files and actually change it so that it's stretched. Mm. And then, because that was like a thing that people did in competitive Counter Strike, mm. everybody was like. That's how we have to play Fortnite. If you want to be a competitive player, you have to play stretch four by three. So hmm. if you see the content creators of Fortnite, yeah. they all play 16 by nine because obviously it looks so much better yeah. uh, on videos than like a really stretched out screen, right? Yeah. Anyway, now the game was designed to be played 16 by nine to begin with. Okay. For, for regular size monitors that we have in 2019. Makes sense. I just don't know why Epic took this long. <laughs> To implement that, not to mention two weeks before a $3 million World Cup? Why? But isn't this kind of Epic's brand at this point? Like, just switching it up a little bit, a couple weeks before, something big happens. Yeah, but it sucks for the pro players. Because, I, I mean, most of them, I know some of them didn't actually play for, uh, didn't play 4x3 mm. for this specific reason. Because everybody was like, it's inevitable at some point, like, we're going to get actual rules and regulations yeah. against this. But... Fortnite, due to its nature of like very heavy patching, people are kind of just like getting used to the that, mm. like always adapting and every single week yeah. is always something new. But again, it sucks to be a pro in that scene. And a lot of people are complaining, but they, you can't do anything about it. Because if you are playing four by three, uh, and you have to switch to 16 by 9 not only is your sensitivity a little bit different mm. because the screen uh, aspect ratio is different, mm. so you have to get used to a different sense. Okay. And all of that, there's just, there's, there's so much that it's just like, why? If I was a Fortnite what? pro, I'd be like, why, why Epic? Like, I would, that's, what, uh, that's honestly why I dropped the game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, just no. I just didn't want to deal with the patches. There was too many. Okay, too many. too many patches. Now you're on Apex hard constantly all the time. Sometimes playing with producer Tyler if you feel like it. Yeah, I try to always play with, with my friends, but... So, so Tyler, yeah. you're getting cut, bud. <laughs> you're cut. No. It's over for There's Tyler. always room. There's always room for Tyler. Oh, room JK. For Tyler. It's just like classic, honestly. Oh, and of course, yeah, JJ Pokecatcher, obviously, too. Our cameraman, Seb, is like pointing to himself, like, invite me, Zurich. <laughs> Listen, no, anytime anybody logs in, I think we've talked about this before, anytime anybody logs in from the spam, Zurich, like, conveniently logs out. <laughs> not all the time. Because he knows we're not good enough to hang. It's fine, Zurich. It doesn't hurt at all. Uh, <laughs> listen, love Fridays, obviously, because we get to tap in to FES a little more, and we'll do the same next Friday, too. But uh, that's all the time we have for today. This week, we want to thank Burns for calling in and you at home for taking time out of your day to join us. Next week, it's a whole new five days of squad. On Mondays, Esports and 30, you know it's going to be Matt, Lisa, and League of Legends playoffs. Till then, check out all our socials at Squad State. 